Hello and welcome to our podcast on joy of teaching international student. I am Dr. Nazrin Sultana, our teaching and learning consultant at Conestoga College, and I'm the host of the podcast. In this podcast, we share our teaching journey and wisdom about teaching international students in the college classroom. Today, my guest is Baljit Bilku, a full-time faculty at the college. Today, Baljit will share his joy and learning from teaching international students. But before that, I will let Baljit to introduce himself. Welcome, Baljit. And do you say happy Baisakhi? Ah, yes, we do. Yeah, thank you, Nasreen. That was a really great uh, introduction. So, yeah, my name is Baljit Bilku, and I'm a full-time faculty here at Conestoga. Um, over the last 30 years, I've been involved within the IT area, mostly around software development, software testing, working for companies like uh, Research Emotion, known as BlackBerry, as well as D12, just to name a few that uh, are in this area. And ever since then, I've been getting sort of into teaching. So I started out uh, part-time in about 2016 and taught a few courses and it just pulled me in. I really loved teaching really um, making an impact on the students about what we were doing in the field. And so they get an idea about what they can expect when they get into the, into the industry. So this is something that I've been doing ever since uh, 2016. So I'm now in my eighth year and I'm really enjoying um, being a full-time faculty at uh, Conestoga. I've also completed my uh, master's in information systems from Athabasca in 2021. So that was a really great uh, opportunity for me to gain that uh, educational experience and to apply it in my uh, career, my current career. Wonderful. Yeah. It's been eight years. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of, you know, wheeling back a little bit of return to time. So can you, do you remember your very first experience with international students? Yes, I do. It was a, a class and that was, that was my actually first time teaching as well. And, uh, and they were all international students. I think it was about um, 20, 22 of them. Mm -hmm. And so I was teaching them software quality assurance. And like, so initially I was very nervous because I never taught before. Mm -hmm. I used to do some lunch and learns back at the, uh, I, where I used to work, but I never did it like in front of a class. And I never thought like, well, how are they going to accept me? How are they going to, are they going to ask me a lot of questions and stuff? So uh, it was a little bit nerve wracking, but then as soon as I got into like my first five or 10 minutes, then things started to, to go well. And I was able to, again, just to show the students about my experience and giving them kind of an idea about what they can expect when they get into the field as well. Mm -hmm. So it was really great that I was able to put my experience into something, into like a frame for the students so yeah. that they're not just learning the theory part, but they are also learning the practical that goes hand in hand. So that really worked out really well. And uh, it, it seemed to have a good effect, effect on the students. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if there was any surprising thing happened something which was surprising for you and you did not expect that to happen in the initial, maybe in the first year of teaching international student? Ah, yeah. So I think the one thing that really surprised me was um, uh, creating my first academic integrity issue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it was very interesting because um, I never experienced anything like that before and mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do at the time. And uh, so it was great that I was able to talk to the other coordinator afterwards mm -hmm. about that. And uh, so then he was able to guide me around. Um, so what happened was that we were having a, an exam in the, in the room. It was a paper-based exam. And so there was no computers um, at that time. And um, so one student actually wanted to go to the washroom. And okay. I said, okay, yeah, you could go to the washroom. And uh Five minutes went by, 10 minutes, and then 20. And I was like, what's going on? I hope she's okay. And the washroom was just down the hall from our uh, room. Okay. And then so she came in. She looked all fine. And I thought, okay, that's good. But then something didn't sit right with me. And so I looked in Econostoga to see what, uh, when that student had last logged in. 
And it was just a few minutes ago. So she went to another room, logged into Econostoga, and took part of, took some of the material there. Okay. And so then I talked to her about it, and she was uh, uh, yeah, in distress about it. She didn't um, thought she would get caught. And so, yeah, that was something that was really interesting. I didn't expect it to happen. I thought, I didn't think people cheated okay. um, at that time, but uh, I was wrong. <laughs> so that was really surprising for me. Yeah. So, Baljit, what was your takeaway from this incident after that? So, yeah, so with that, I knew I had to actually um, put a lot more emphasis on how to um, to put academic integrity at the front as well, like mm-hmm. to to do more thinking about it, about when I am going to be giving an assessment, okay, how can I make it so that students don't have a chance to to cheat or to create an academic uh, incident? Um, so I've been looking at ways on how to do that. And one of the things that worked out for me was to actually give them a little quiz oh. at the beginning of the of the semester to say that, hey, if you can complete this uh, quiz, this will give me an idea about your understanding about academic integrity. So it's just about 10 questions about certain situations. Like, for example, you're sitting, at, um, you're sitting in your room at 10 o'clock at night and you haven't started your assignment, which is due in the morning. Mm-hmm. What do you do? A, you copy from your roommate, right? B, you know, you do the work, get it whatever you get and hand it in as is, right? So these are kind of questions I put up and it seemed to have a little bit of effect that at least students kind of understood that we do take academic integrity seriously here okay. and um, that, you know, we do expect them to also take it seriously. And when they are doing their work, their assessments, that this is something that, you know, is going to be for their benefit in the long run. Thank you, Baljit. I think you have shared a beautiful idea. Uh, to talk about academic integrity in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And not only that, even to train the students by giving them situation. Mm -hmm. Because uh, many first semester students may not know, okay, what is academic integrity? Even Mm -hmm. those situations you talked about, sometimes it is important to tell them, hey, if you do that, that actually is a cheating. Mm -hmm. So that's a brilliant idea, I would say. Thank you so much for sharing. Sure. And um, because you talked about a little bit about assessment, So I wonder that if you'd like to share about some idea that how, maybe one idea about how do you prep the student for assessment? Because for many international students, uh, these kind of assessments we have in Canada, they are very new to them. Do you have any particular idea that you'd like to share with us today? Yeah. So the one thing I've been doing ever since I started teaching here at Conestoga Mm -hmm. is to make the assessment available to the students as soon as I can. And then for us to walk through it. Mm -hmm. So I do take a bit of time in class. We're mostly towards the end of the class. And we go through the assessment. We walk through about um, what it is that the students need to do. Mm -hmm. What do I expect in in when they are going to be turning in their submissions? And so also to answer any of the questions that they may have. Because I noticed this as well, that um, giving the students an assessment and having them to read it Sometimes they didn't get it or they had questions afterwards. And sometimes they'd always ask at the last minute, like about an hour before it's due, right? And it's really, I can't really help you too much there. But um, so this is something that I've always followed through that making sure that we go, we spend some time about the, each of the assessments, about what it is that they need to do, what the rubric is going to be about and, uh, and to give them time to like soak it in. And then think about, okay, what are the questions that they have and to mm. answer, uh, answer those questions for them. So um, this is something that I've found very useful. And some of the, um, the feedback that I've been getting was that the assessments have been really clear. The assignments have been really clear for the students. So this is something that it's, it's good to get that feedback because you know you're on the right track and students yeah. are appreciating it. So I think this is something that um, I hope to continue and mm-hmm. to go a little bit more in depth into, but uh, this is something again that has worked out quite well for me and to spend a little bit of time at the front so that the students are all on the same page. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. I think clarity really matters in yeah. when you talk about assessment mm-hmm. um, because you already talked about a couple of challenges while teaching international student, mm-hmm. but then uh, 
is there any other one challenge then you probably would like to share with us i hope that some new faculty are listening to us today and probably it could be helpful for them because maybe they're very new to teaching international student yeah yeah so the one thing i'd really like to share is um and this is something i noticed earlier on in my career here at conestoga mm -hmm. was that the lack of uh, practical skills that some of the international students uh, yeah. had so um what I noticed is that um, the students were really good at memorizing things mm -hmm. and to, you know, go by the book, right? But when they actually had to do the work, like yes. the practical work, which we put a lot of emphasis on, because that's what employers actually want, um, this is something that I found was lacking mm -hmm. in a lot of the international students. They didn't have, when I talked to them, they were saying, well, we didn't have computers at our schools. Mm -hmm. We didn't have, you know... The instructors, they just gave us the textbook to read and whatever, right? So I could see from their point of view that they didn't have those resources. But when they come here, they're like, okay, you got to log into Econostoga. You got to get all your um, your information, all your course material from there. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, but to also do the work on your own computer. So this all involves doing the setup, the configuration, and then to actually do the work and then yeah. to report results. So that takes a lot of effort. And if you're not accustomed to that, so that could be a bit of a challenge for, let's say, those that are not technically oriented yes. in, in some cases. So the one thing I I found that worked out for me to mitigate those these kind of situations mm -hmm. is to work with students at a very basic level. So give okay. them all the basic understanding that this is what we're doing and this is why we're doing this. Okay. And also to do that kind of hands-on work in the class so that I get to observe it. So maybe what I'll do is that if the students need to set up a certain program or certain software, I'll make sure that they do it within class so that I'm there to help them out. Okay. And then they can go out and, and do the assignment on their own at their own time. But this is something that I found that worked out quite well, that if I'm there, I'm able to answer their questions and to help out if anything does go, go wrong with, with their, any of their, their practical work. This is another brilliant idea you have shared. Mm -hmm. And definitely we have seen that how students struggle with practical work. Mm -hmm. So I think definitely as you have spoken, active learning techniques could be very helpful for them. Exactly. Already giving them a hint of what they probably will be doing in their work life. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for sharing even, you know, what you do, your practices also. Mm -hmm. You already have shared a few tips with us. Yeah. But then moving forward, if you would like to share one of your a really helpful tip to the new faculty, then what will be that? I would go back to the point about clarity. Okay. Um, so that's the one thing that I found that students really appreciate. Um, again, maybe some of the students that are coming into our college, mm -hmm. English is not their first language. Yes. So as a result, they may not be as fluent mm -hmm. in English as some of our domestic students or other students, let's say from other countries. Yeah. So the one thing that really worked well for me is to have that clarity, mm -hmm. make sure everything, not only like verbal, but also written mm -hmm. to make sure both aspects that the students can understand and to get that feedback from the students that, for example, if I'm presenting an assignment, I'd ask the students, does anyone have any questions? Okay. Is there anything that's not clear, anything that I can help out with, mm -hmm. right? And some of the students, again, may be a bit shy there yes. and say, don't. So I say, okay, well, um, to open up those communication avenues for them, like, okay, contact me through Teams or contact okay. me through email if you do have any questions about this at a later time. Mm -hmm. So I think clarity is a really good thing and a really important thing, but also being available for the students. I'm not saying like, you know, like on your free time to be available, but during mm -hmm. the business hours yes. and stuff to definitely make an effort. Mm -hmm. I've been very uh, notorious for um, uh, responding to emails like like within seconds. Um, this is just from my uh, uh, days at BlackBerry when we had our, our BlackBerry devices and whenever we get an email, <laughs> we'd always like try to rush to uh, respond to it. So I've been always carrying that around with me. And I, I think this is something that students appreciate mm -hmm. that sometimes they send an email off and they're not sure whether they're going to get a response or not. But I do try to make an effort to try to get back to them within a business day or two business days, depending on the issue. And then um, so just to let them know that, you know, that someone is there to help them out. Yeah. And I think once they have that, the idea that 
you know, the clarity as well as being able to rely upon someone. Mm -hmm. I think these are two th great things for, again, those international students that maybe haven't had that kind of support back home or that because they are so far away from home, they can't mm -hmm. really rely on other sources. So again, having the, the these two aspects really help those uh, those students. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And the movie and coming back to the idea of uh, replying to emails. So uh, Conestog always says that try to reply within two business days. So in that case, even though some people may not be able to reply right away, like that way you do, and I definitely appreciate that. But then even you know having that expectation set up from the beginning that if not on the same day, I'm going to reply within two business days. And in that way, uh, students are not uh, kind of, you know, helplessly waiting for us. They would know that what the expectation window. So thank you so much for sharing. And uh, I really appreciate one of the points you have mentioned about that they may not have the same support back home and the supports are also new to them. So I think sometime uh, being an international student myself, sometime, you know, the point is that I knew that those supports are there. Even having the trust also that what I'm going to have from those support. It may take some time mm -hmm. and probably may ha need some effort from the faculty. Kind of create that trust also that, mm -hmm. oh, I'm there. I'm going to help yeah. because the relationship we have here between student and teacher are very different than what I had back home. Mm -hmm. So I always had a kind of fear even to approach the teacher because I thought, oh, maybe they would be angry at me. Why didn't I understand? Mm -hmm. So I think thank you so much for sharing that idea of they may not have the same support back home. Mm -hmm. I'm just about to wrap up our conversation and I would like to wrap up with, uh, you know, the sense of joy that today we are talking about. And I personally believe also that there is so much of joy and rewarding feelings um, are involved while teaching international students. So as closing, uh, as I'm closing to this conversation, my last question will be, that would you like to share maybe a couple of experiences or some experiences of you that where you felt really, really rewarded that, okay, I did a great job and that's what I teach for. Yeah, sure. Uh, several examples, so I'll just keep it to a <laughs> few there. But, Go ahead. Uh, I'm all for stories. Okay. Um, so what I found was joy happened in various areas. Yes. Um, so for example, like in the classroom, like I found joy when students were able to do something that they didn't have the experience before. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like when I was teaching students about um, how to do like a, a cybersecurity exploit. Okay. So they were able to take control of another machine that mm -hmm. was on their controlled network. So this is something that I always see, see like the smile on their face, like when they're able to like take control of another computer. Okay. Like, so they've actually done a little bit of hacking themselves, <laughs> right? And they didn't think it was possible. They thought, well, you need to know a lot of coding. You need to know a lot of networking and stuff like that. But within a few lines of code or little uh, um, commands, I was able to show them that you were able to take control of another computer and make it your puppet. Okay. And so you just see their eyes just open really wide that they were able to do something like this. And this is something that really gave me pleasure because or joy in the sense that they weren't they didn't have this skill before, yes. but with a little bit of training, a little bit of patience that they were able to, to do that on their own uh, with little or not much effort from myself. Um, the other thing I really wanted to talk about was when, um, when students that have graduated yeah. and that they get the, the job that they want in our particular fields, which is IT. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had this one student, um, she was, um, not really confident about her abilities in getting an IT job here because again, international student, she didn't know she had the skills or something yeah. like that. So this is where I went back to my managerial days from mm -hmm. BlackBerry to actually coach her and say that, you know, you have to keep at it. You know, you're not going to get the job, first job that you apply to. Yeah. You know, you got to keep going at it. You can't give up. Right. And so I reviewed her resume. Um, she told me she had an interview I gave her some tips on how to conduct the interview, uh, what things to say, what things not to say. <laughs> and uh, so this is something that uh, really worked out well, that she was able to get the job afterwards. And I went, one time I met her in the library, I was talking to another student. And so she came up to us and she said, you know what, I just really wanted to thank you for what you did mm -hmm. for helping me out to... Uh, uh, to get that job, you know, mm -hmm. because if it wasn't for you, you know, who knows, I would have been 
working at a, a non IT job mm. and maybe making minimum wage or something. But she says, at least I, I'm in the IT field and I can move and I can progress. Yeah. And so this is something that really gave me a lot of pleasure and joy in the sense that I was able to help her directly, not only to give her the, the, the material from the courses or the program that we were teaching, but also to take it one step further and to provide my skills from a managerial point of view to say that, you know what, this is how you should create your resume. This is how, how you should conduct yourself in an interview and stuff. So this is something that I found really, um, really joy. And the last example I wanted to give was this re just recently I had the opportunity to attend convocation. Okay. And uh, so it was really, um, it really brought me joy to see some of my students actually going up on the stage and then to get their uh, certificates and then to come down because we were allowed to uh, stand on the one side. Yes. And so it was really great to see them. And then they seen you and they were like really happy that because a lot of them don't have their family here to yes. celebrate that, that joyous occasion. Um, but at least if they see some of our, their professors there, mm -hmm. they were able to share that, that joy with them. So yeah, I found joy at various levels within my, within this career. And so this is why it sort of keeps me coming back. It keeps me like, uh, getting up in the morning every day, just because it does give you that joy at the various levels and something that you can take that you do have, a, a, an impact on the students, um, in terms of like what you're providing them in terms of your teaching and your experience. So it's just something that, yeah, I can certainly relate to and provide me immense joy. Thank yeah. you, Baljit. And your, this, uh, the anecdotes you have shared, they made me very emotional. Mm. It's very true. The joy of teaching lies in different level. Mm -hmm. And especially when we see our students are successful in their field uh, and they get what they want to have and for what they have come to this country. I mean, this is so wonderful seeing them excel in their life. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for sharing your wonderful experience with us. And thank you so much for sharing your teaching journey with us today. I hope you continue sharing your joys about teaching international students in your career. And I wish you all the best. Thank you very much for this opportunity. It was, it was really nice speaking with you today.